Hello, everybody. Welcome to Real Quick, episode 68, our review of Minari this week. We are very excited to talk about this movie. I think all of us agreed it's um, really great. I think uh, Seth, who just had to hop off, unfortunately, I think he rated it the lowest, but um, this was uh, this was recommended by our patron, Will Kim. So if you want to recommend movies and um, that we review for like throwbacks, uh, make sure to go to the Patreon and let us know. Um, what what you want to see if if you are a patron you you're able to give us the recommendations um so th- shout out him for this one i i've heard about minari like i i just i know it's critically acclaimed people love it i'd never actually seen it i don't think anyone on this uh, podcast had actually rated it whether they've seen it or not i'm not sure um but i i was very shocking. excited to I was, watch this. I was shocked none of us had logged this yeah, yeah. Uh, um just for like, it's one of those movies that has just been on my watch list forever. forever yeah and i'm really happy it was also on youtube so i got to watch it for free so shout out youtube um but i'm very happy i watched this i gave it a 95 out of 100 five out of five stars i absolutely adored it i believe tyler's up there in a four and a half i think george gave it a four and a half if i'm not mistaken so we all really really enjoy this we'll start with tyler um give us your initial thoughts of minari Yep. So initial thoughts, non-spoiler free or non-spoiler. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is a, a very good movie. It's a very quaint, muted movie. That's It's about the American dream for an immigrant family. So they're, they moved to Arkansas. They're not really immigrants because they were living in California before them, but they're, you know, migrants within America, but still at one point they were immigrants. So it's a, it's a different take because obviously we have so many movies about the American dream, like the founder, all kinds of movies about business, business CEOs that start from whatever, nothing in America and build their way up. But to see a, a take of it on the American dream for an immigrant family was quite interesting. Uh, the Yee family, they moved to Arkansas. I mean, clearly for anyone who lives in America, you know, Arkansas is like very much like a middle of nowhere kind of area. Not just, It's more middle of nowhere than Indiana. Right, exactly. Like very country. So obviously like even more of a culture shock, obviously, I can imagine for sure, than, you know, an immigrant family moving to New York City or L.A. So Arkansas is very much Central America, center of America, not Central America. And so it's a, it's a quite new environment for them. They work on a farm. Uh, Stephen Young, the father, is or they own land that has a farm. He, he's really just trying to provide for his family in any way possible. Meanwhile, the family, it's a, it's a heavy story on the on the traits and symbols of family itself, you know, obviously you have the grandmother, you have the relationship between Stephen Young and his wife of how it's kind of, you know, getting fractured because he put so much money into trying to make this work and they're struggling and it's tough. And there's just a lot of cultural, ad- cultural adaptations that have to be made and just keeping it at a high level. I just thought it was a very solid film, very quaint. I don't think I was like quite in the mood to watch something like this last night. I still gave it a 4.5. That being said, I think this is 8.8 out of 10. Um, I, I think this could even be higher on rewatch or something because it is definitely like, I wouldn't call it like a slow burn, but you know, like Lee Isaac Chung, he also did burning, right? I believe he also directed that. And we, we re- reviewed that probably, I don't know, like half a year ago at this point, but you know, he makes very slow moving movies. That one I feel like builds up to more of a climax than this. But it's definitely just like a it's just a family drama at its core is what it is. And there's not a lot of crazy things that happen. That was that was actually directed by Lee Chong Lee Chang Dong um for okay. burning. So not Lee Isaac. Okay. Both Lee's though. Yeah. So. Fair. Um I feel like they, I feel like this guy wrote something else or was part of something that we all watched recently, Lee Isaac Chong. Maybe maybe beef, I don't know. Um but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I think I'd go up on rewatch or if I watched it when I was in the more of a headspace for like a very muted family drama. I just, you know, just wasn't really feeling that vibe last night. But again, I still rated it highly. And I will just speak for Seth as a caveat. He also said something similar. He gave it a four star. But he said, like, he watched it early in the morning this morning before the episode. Wasn't quite in the mood for something like this. But obviously, we're watching it for to review it on the show. So he also said, like, his four stars to take that with a grain of salt as well. Because he said he was, like, not in the mind space to watch something like this. So he thinks it also could go up for him, too. But, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave the rest of my thoughts for after we kind of break the spoiler wall. Okay. Uh, uh, George, give us your yeah. initial thoughts. Pretty much the same as Tyler. I, I, I really liked it. I'll go back to, to my typical quote. There's just beauty and simplicity. And this movie was a very reserved way of telling the American dream story, which I absolutely adored. And some of the shot selections and the emotional score really elevated this movie for me. It really made me – it gave the landscape a character of its own, which really elevated the story of um, – of Steven Young's character, which I really, really liked. 
Um, the emotion hit. The, the the themes were were not shoved down my throat, but they were told in a very respectful and reserved way, which I really liked. All right, clear. If you, if you're watching this, you may know that there was a minor cut where George was talking, and then it just stopped. We lost some power back recording but we're keeping what we had so just bear with us we're going to skip over whatever george had said we don't know how far <laughs> he got into the review but uh, i'm just going to give my quick thoughts of like i absolutely adored this movie i don't know uh, i know you guys mentioned that um you weren't maybe in the right mindset uh to watch this i don't know what mindset you needed to be in but i think i was in a pretty good mindset so therefore i think i'm the only credible source that this is a five out of five movie <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I really did love it. Uh, I think I don't think it's like too slow. Like I thought burning was, which we keep bringing up because uh, both have Steven Yen, both involve him burning down uh, 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 barns or something. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I think this, the themes of like hope and, and growing is actually absolutely beautiful and done really, done really well. Uh, the American dream I think is something that like it used to be a really big thing in movies and, and you know, you don't um, you don't see it all that often, but I do think that out there, like there are people that are still being like really well helped by like whatever you want to call it, the American dream. You know, I'm not sure like how impactful it is anymore per se with a lot of just like the tension that this country has, unfortunately, but I will say it, it, it's a very, nice story to see this thing absolutely like brought me to tears and then has like an uplift it didn't actually bring me to tears unfortunately i wish i cried but made me very sad i said i texted you guys and i was like yeah this is the kind of movie that just ruins my day um but uh then it gives you a little uplifting ending it's interesting to see um steven yen's character uh jacob jacob yeah that he is like a very much a believer in the american dream where monica played by um, I have to look up her, who that actor is. Monica, played by Han Yi Ri, was uh, like less so in a believer of the American dream. Um, so it's interesting to see the two dynamics between them. Like she's fine with just being this family and not needing to be like super successful, like just having themselves together. Whereas uh, Stephen Yen wants to be very successful and needs, and he says like he needs his kids to see him succeed once. Um, so that's a big theme of like attempting to succeed, um, and having hope for that success. Uh, I, I really loved it. I think it just flew by honestly while I was watching it. Um, I did watch it in two parts cause I like, I didn't time it out right to like skip it in between, um, like Emma's birthday celebration. So maybe that makes it fly by a little bit more, but I, I really loved it. Um, don't really have anything negative to say. I don't know necessarily if there's spoilers in this movie, but just to kind of give, I don't think I read the synopsis. So the synopsis is a Korean family moves to Arkansas uh, farm in search of its own American dream amidst the challenges of this new life in, in the strange and rugged Ozarks. They discover the undeniable resilience of family and what really makes a home. So basically uh, Stephen Yen's character wants to set up this farm um, I don't know exactly what their job is, but it's basic. They call it sexing chickens. So they just basically like separate chickens, male from female, because um, female chickens, I guess, don't taste good. And they're obviously the ones that lay eggs. So they're the most important chickens. So that's like what their job is. And doing that job, they're they're just scraping by. Right. And that's not what Steven Yen's character wants to do. Jacob, Monica, his wife, like is fine with that as long as they have each other. Um, and so you kind of just see that the two perspectives of like going through this American dream and what it feels like um, to actually make it in America and what success is measured by um, any spoiler thoughts. Like, I don't know necessarily what we want to get into. We can talk about the ending of the movie. Um, I don't, I don't have a structure necessarily. Are you guys thinking yeah. anything? Um, so, well, I guess you said it flew by, which like I did mention at first, like I said, it's like a slow burn ish movie, but I didn't necessarily think it was slow because I agree. Yeah. Like I was watching it like around dinner time and like I paused it at one point. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go get some food and like finish the movie while I'm, while I eat. And I like paused. It. I was like expecting it to be halfway done. It was like an hour 30 and there's like 20 minutes. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. This kind of flew by. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the main thing I got from it was attention between him and his wife, how he, so you see early on when they're, they're back in, or no, not in California, but when they first moved to Arkansas, he's like outside out of the shop with his son. And he's basically like, do you like what we have here? And he's like, 
He's like, yeah, I like it. It's nice. And then he's like, well, do you remember what we had in California? Or did you like California? He's like, oh, no, we didn't have anything there. So Stephen Young clearly takes a lot of pride out of providing for his family. But you can also see the same thing of how his wife is not built that way when they first get to their new plot of land and his kids are frolicking through the fields and running around. His wife was very quick to be like, oh, stop running. Like, come back here. And like, where like Stephen Young probably took a lot of pleasure out of seeing them like explore all the land he now has and enjoying this Arkansas area. Cause even though they're not necessarily a stereotypical American family, he clearly knows that like Arkansas is no California in terms of like stuff to do, fun people to see culture, be able to get, you know, anything that's reminiscent of anything of a big city in Arkansas. So, and uh, with his grandmother gets sick, like his wife is obviously much more interested in the family being healthy, happy together where Steven Yen wants success, wants to show off, like wants his family to have a nicer house, have nicer land, um, have kind of what the American dream is. There's a really interesting deconstruction of that. And yeah, like Cam said, I wasn't going to mention this in spoilers, I guess, it, or non-spoilers, because I guess it's not really a spoiler, but yeah, Stephen Young is just, everything he's in, there's fire. So let's just think. Burn, fire. Burning yeah. fire. This movie, fire. Nope, I'm pretty sure there's a fire in it at some point. Um, that is one, uh, <laughs> beef, that is beef, like a fire. fun fact on IMDb. That's a fun fact on IMDb of like, uh, he in burning, he wants to burn down uh, a uh barn but in this he tries to stop his barn from burning down so i was like that's not really a fun fact that's just kind of like <laughs> yeah. he's playing two characters that involve right. fire but yeah but like even I, in the I walking dead like fire like everything i think steven young has yeah. touched there's fire involved and we just lost camp but yeah it's just crazy that, it's just crazy that everything like i swear everything he's in because was he in lost also yeah. like i'm sure like the plane gets on fire i got and they probably make campfires every night he might not was be in he? Lost. no no steven, i don't think he i don't remember him in lost Lost but no, while, while we're on the topic of Stephen Young, I think that's where I got cut off before now. So I'll just kind of repeat myself yeah. for the audience. But yeah, the, now that I've seen Minari, it makes so much sense that everyone kept talking about how stacked the lineup was for that Best Actor nominee that year because we had Stephen Young and Minari, Riz Ahmed in Sound of Metal, Chadwick Boseman in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, Anthony Hopkins in The Father, and Gary Oldman in Mank. So it's it's a ridiculous lineup and... To say that for me, I haven't seen The Father, so I'm, I'm going to exclude Anthony Hopkins from this this dissection. But I would rank Stephen Young too behind Riz Ahmed in uh, Sound of Metal for that year. I think he's just fucking brilliant in this movie. His relationship with every character is just so just emotionally raw and real, and that's what I think this movie does really well. It really capture the you know American dream and, and the life of immigrants incredibly well and obviously that's not something i can relate to so the fact that i think this movie does a very good job at portraying this and making me feel something for this family i, I that's why i hold this movie as highly as i do just because of how real it feels yeah for sure and Stephen young uh one of the fun facts at imdb was that when he was nominated for best actor he was the first actor of east asian descent to be nominated for best actor so that's a cool little note but yeah he was incredible in this i think the fire the barn fire really is just like the perfect symbol for the movie because that's what yeah ties the two together so well because his wife is all about family first he's all about business first there's a quote where she says like because they're, they're obviously fighting a ton in front of the kids and then he's like basically just saying like oh like our all of our issues are going to be f fixed once like this farm starts working better where she's basically like, so like we won't be able to save each other, but like our, our money is supposed to save us. Like it doesn't make sense to her. But when, when that fire comes, that's really where the two stories collide. And he realizes, cause yeah. he's like, he's like, he stays in that fire way too long trying to save shit. Whereas his, and his wife goes in there and helps him and tries to get him out. And then they kind of both look back at the fire burning building. And that's when they kind of both realize that family really is all that matters. And it was more so that it was more so Stephen Young's character because he was really the only one because like the grandma, the kids, the wife, they were kind of all on board for this, whereas he was totally not. And then once everything kind of burned in front of his face, he uh, he realized what actually truly matters. And and like Cam said, it's sad, but ends up on a somewhat uplifting note. But yeah, I think it's a very, yeah, very good it's, drama. Yeah, I think the, the whole family dynamic in this entire movie, from where it starts to where it ends, is is really amazing. Like I said earlier, I don't know if this part got cut out or not, so I'll repeat it. But the fact that this movie just dives right into the problems between Jacob and Monica, I think is a really bold way to start a movie. Like they didn't start us with like this movie could have easily added 20 minutes and started it with, Oh, family, happy moving. Like, Oh, they're going to live the American dream. They're all happy. And then when they get there, everything gets absolutely shit on, but they just start us off right there. 
Obviously, Jacob and Monica have that massive fight in the kitchen. And I think that sets the tone for the entire movie on like where these two characters are in terms of what they're looking for in life. Like you said, Monica just wants she doesn't want anything. She just wants a family and a happy life. She was perfectly fine with her life in California, even though they were most likely struggling. Um, and Jacob is the complete opposite. Jacob wants to make sure that he's not seen as a failure through his uh, through the eyes of his kids, and he wants to succeed. So coming to uh, Arkansas and building this, uh, you know, Korean farm is is his means of doing so. So just the dichotomy between the two characters, and then obviously when they end up, where they end up in that you know semi uplifting fashion after the barn burns down. I think it's just a really good start and end for this movie. And then everything in between obviously just ties together that development really well. Yeah. And I guess I'd be remiss if we didn't, if I didn't mention like the symbol of like the Minari seed, cause what the movie's named after. So the Minari seed, they mentioned, that too. yeah, they mentioned that if that, if that seed's planted the right spot, if it's where it's supposed to be, that it's, it's super resilient. It's able to grow in any conditions. It's, it's a strong seed. So I think that's just like exactly yeah. perfect metaphor for the whole movie. Like, where the family needs to be is not necessarily location. It's not necessarily Korea or Los Angeles or middle of Arkansas. It's more about the mind state the family's in. If they're together, if they're cohesive, then they'll be able to strong, be strong, grow through anything, whether it's a down year for their crops, whether the mom has to work crazy hours and the kids sexing chickens, that it's not necessarily a physical place, but if the emotional headspace of a family is one unit, they'll be able to get through anything. And the Minari seed was a perfect way to kind of bring that symbol to light. Yeah, and I, I, I particularly love that entire Minari scene because I this was the first time I had seen this movie. But even before this, I just kept questioning what Minari meant, what it was. I figured it was something related to, to Korean heritage or Korean descent or something. Um, so to see that play in the movie as well as it does for all the reasons you just explained, I think was a really solid scene. And then also coming from that scene, I love the relationship between the grandma and David, the son. I thought it was just such an interesting dynamic where like, that's exactly how a little boy would react to seeing his grandma for the first time after a few years. Like he's questioning, is that even her? He's not liking her presence. He's, she's kind of getting in her way. Uh, he makes her drink pee because of how like resentful he is of her. Um, and then even in between all of those moments of like, loose hatred between the two they still have like these really intimate moments like the minari scene that i really liked and that's just another part of this movie that really attracted me to the screenplay was every character just had some sort of different dynamic with every other character and there was always like one or two scenes that really just brings me into this relationship and just had me so locked into like what they were talking about and where their relationship was going to go from here particularly obviously with jacob and monica but that's the whole movie, I think, is just written incredibly, and I really do want to rewatch this very soon when I'm, you know, more in the mindset of, uh, you know, expected sad movie with a lot of deep themes. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I had no clue what obviously a Minari seed was before this movie, so I didn't know if Minari was something like in Yun from past lives, or it's like something related to yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Literally, that's exactly what I was kind of figuring. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought it was done super well. So. Uh, do you have any more thoughts on this? Otherwise, we'll take over for Cam and close it out. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, we could. I went with a four and a half. I think all three of us went with a four and a half. Mm -hmm. Seth went with a four. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be curious to hear his thoughts. I don't even think he wrote a letterbox review, but I'd still like to hear his thoughts. Maybe he can just quickly give some on the next Real Talk episode. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, I really adored this movie. Um, I, I think it was technically beautiful and just looked stunning. I think the camera work was exceptional. The score, uh, I was listening to it this morning before we uh, were recording our podcast. And yeah, the character work is just incredible. And I think it captures that American dream lifestyle very well. Agreed. Yeah, great movie. Uh, highly recommend it. Thank you for the suggestion. I don't have who was pulled up, but I believe Cam said at the top of the episode, and he'll say at the top of the description down below yep. who, who recommended this, this real quick. But Minari, four thumbs up from the crew and uh yes thank you for bearing through this episode with seth not being able to be here and the power outage that had to cause a weird cut and then cam dropping out this is a this is a grinder episode of the real quick on episode like 68 or whatever we're at so thank you all for watching and listening 
Um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on Spotify right now, rate us five stars. And if you're on Apple, rate us five stars and write us a nice little note, nice little review. And uh, with that, we will see you in the next episode, which will be the Real Talk episode coming on Monday. So peace out.